The Global Peace Index is the brainchild of Australian philanthropist Steve Killerley. He wanted to begin in some way to measure the impact of peacefulness rather than the impact of war or violence. And so he approached the Economist Intelligence Unit and uh, talked to them about how they could begin to create what now has become the Global Peace Index. It's now in its third year and looks at 144 countries around the globe. Uh, they studied 23 indicators made up of both internal and external factors. So internal indicators would include prison population, access to arms, and uh, external indicators would include things like the percentage of GDP uh, spent on defense. Working with colleagues in Washington and also with our public affairs colleagues here in London, um, we developed messages to encourage, if you like, the debate around the drivers of peace uh, rather than looking at who came top, who came bottom, which was obviously the more sensational angle to the Global Peace Index. Because the objective of the index is to create a debate around the drivers of peace. This year's index focused on the economic costs of a lack of peacefulness uh, and also how the recession had impacted that across the globe. As well as issuing tailored press releases to all of the 144 countries around the world, showing them how they had fared, how they'd improved, the kind of drivers that had been particularly important for them in making up the rankings, we also pre-briefed international media, so the likes of FT, Reuters, but also foreign language uh, media, we had pre-briefings with FA, uh, the Spanish wire service. We had pre-briefings with Xinhua for China. Uh, we had pre-briefings with Handelsblatt for Germany, Les Echos for France, La Tribune, uh, and a variety of others in order to really drive some really in-depth key media as well as the press release distribution. 36 hours after the launch, we had generated 62,000 entries on Google and 477 news articles uh, in a variety of languages, which obviously we were very pleased about. Um, the vast majority of that coverage was positive and on message.